when you break up with someone, do you go on Instagram and delete them intentionally? Like you as, as APAS, mm. do you go on Instagram and delete your exes? So you, if it comes to... Do you to unfollow your exes? Because for me, I feel like it's petty and childish. Me, I don't. Like, okay. I, I would, leave you there. I would say it depends on how the breakup was. That's true. Right now, someone else is in charge. So I'm not really bothered too much about what is going on. If, if, if something is bad, you can let me know if there's a problem. We can definitely talk. But I'm, I'm now somewhere else. And I want to focus on that. I don't want to focus on, on, on the past. And I'm not really into that. We had our moment. I still like hey, you as a human being. Do you follow them or not? <laughs> <laughs> first big paycheck as an artist, right? What did you do with that money? First big paycheck, not the biggest. Okay. The biggest. The okay, first I can't biggest. Say first big and then the biggest. Okay. Oh, first wait. So the first big is not the biggest. Uh -uh. Oh, for me, I'm stuck on baby girl. Let's talk about that. <laughs> 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 oh my god. First of all, do you consider yourself a love, like a lover, like you're you're so loving? Yeah. I think yeah. you are. You know why? Why? Because um, Thank would you date someone in the industry, like someone? Yeah, in if I like them, why not? Okay. I, I like would that. because because I would understand. Like I know what you do. Okay. I know what you do. I know you people are going to meet you. People love you. Just like how I love you, there are people out there who love you. And I should understand that. And that's the funny thing is that people think there's exclusivity with the love that they have for the person. No. We have exclusivity in our relationship because we care about one another and we've chosen to be together. Yeah. <laughs> Season three. I can't believe we have made it this far. To all the doubters, <laughs> what's that Drake meme? The <laughs> tweeters and deleters. <laughs> we are officially in season three. I'm very excited about that. And everybody's been asking me on social media, like, when are you coming back? When are you coming back? And I'm back. <laughs> I'm sorry it's taken so long. It was supposed to be a one-month break. It ended up being a month and a half. But yeah, still that's a long time to be away, guys. I didn't ghost you. I'm back. And obviously kicking off the season on a very strong note. I'm very pleased and very excited to be introducing my next guest. Multi-award winning, multi-talented, singer-songwriter, artist-performer. And he has worked with very many big brands big names and even on international should i say international productions yeah i'm gonna go with that <laughs> welcome to the show hey oh, how are you <laughs> i'm good i'm so happy to, to have you here finally yeah yes finally <laughs> Rhyme the backstory and i want everybody to know this apas is a personal friend or at least i thought <laughs> i used to reach out to apas i'm like yo can you come through for an interview it was like I'm not doing interviews right now. I'm, 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 I'm a bit busy. I'm like, hey, Pascal, can you come to you? No, 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 no. Right now I'm in the middle of something. I'm like, bro, like, come on. Where's the love? <laughs> the love is here. The love is finally here. Yes. <laughs> now, I find, now I finally believe it. I was starting yeah. to doubt. I was like, are we friends? Am I mm. tying on this guy? <laughs> <laughs> but welcome to the show. Thank you. Okay, so the intro hi i gave you all your props multiple yeah. award winning yeah. artists da, 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 da. was being an artist something that you always wanted to do yeah most definitely like from when you were a child no i don't think so i just <laughs> like music just like any other kid like yeah. that likes music you know you listen to music uh, my dad used to play a lot of music at the house so i was just a fan of of listening to, to sound like listening to music and funny enough like I ended up being one, but I, it's not something I thought about. I would mind for my friends songs that I'd learned, listen to songs on radio, yeah. and uh, just sing for them. So, but I never thought that I'd actually be singing for so many people. Like, I'm actually a real artist. Mm. Uh, it, it, it was never in my mind. So, when you were younger, what did you want to be? Like, you know those things, when I grow up, I'll be a doctor. Mm. What was yours? Uh, I wanted to be a superhero. <laughs> 
Yeah, you know, like I like Captain Planet. Now I Planet. understand the outfit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, like Captain Planet, like um, Batman, yeah, like Superman, like Robin. Like you look at all these cartoons and you're like, man, I need to be strong, whatever. I wanted to be like a movie actor because I liked Van Damme, I liked uh, Bruce Lee. I liked, uh, who else? Like uh, Schwarzenegger. Mm. Like, I, I was just a fan of like action uh, action movies yeah. and also like cartoon characters, like the superhero characters, DC, like um, DC comic books. I like comic books. So I was really into the fighting thing and the saving thing. Like, you know what? I, I, I understand what you're saying. I completely mm. understand. <laughs> when I grow up, I want to be Spider-Man. Okay, yes. question. Mm. Let's talk about the outfit before we even go any further. Mm. I like, I like, you know, it's giving. Thank you. But let's talk about it. <laughs> the hat. The hat was, was, was uh, a gift from a friend. Mm -hmm. So I have a friend called Yiga. Yiga Art. Yeah. He's an artist. Actually painted one of my murals in the house. He does doll art, art, but with dolls, the doleze, yeah, as they say, banana mm. fibers, you know. Is he the one who had an exhibition at Yes, at Motive, Motive. Yes. yes, at Motive. So mm. he's really, really talented. And um, he, he was in Ghana uh, for like two months, three months. So when he came back, he came back with this for me. Okay. So he brought it, and um, I'm very thankful. It's a gift, and um, yeah, the denim thing is like, yeah, I like this. I look cool. So like my designer likes to make me this baggy stuff, so I like them. So and and it looks good. Feel. Thank you. It looks good. Who is like your fashion inspiration? Where do you get fashion inspiration from? Do you just like think about what you want to look like and then do that? Or do you like go on Pinterest like some of us and, and go through? <laughs> yeah, Pinterest, uh, but I'm big in Japan. Okay. Yeah, I like Japan. So, Japan. Yeah, I like the Japanese fashion. Like yeah. the street fashion is, is amazing. So mm. I feel like that's where my inspiration is drawn. Mm. Like to what I wear. Like lately, it's like that buggy buggy kind of vibe, and uh, that Japan kind of feel. Yeah. That's 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 what I like. So I said international productions. I just want to give our audience um, the, the the context. Yeah. You featured or your songs featured um in queen of katwe yeah, yeah which was like which is a hollywood movie yeah yeah and that was that happened like in your first year when you're just broken out close close yes because that was in 20 2016 because i came out 2014 mid 2014 mm. then 2015 but 2016 is when they reached out yeah. yeah and that's like listen if you've just started your career yeah and then you get something like that. It's kind of like a big deal. Yes, it is. In your opinion, what are like the top three qualities that you feel like somebody should possess or should have to be a leading artist or like a big artist in Uganda? Um, uh, there, there are probably four or five mm -hmm. quality material. What does that mean? You're going the to music itself, it has to like the yeah, quality, quality music, quality music okay. or the quality product, whatever it is that you do. Mm -hmm. uh, the performance, how you perform that stuff, like there has to be something about that thing that you do and how you present it. Basically, the performance, yeah. the appearance, and personality. And to be honest, like if you look at like. Um, my appearance you already can pick and say it's it's one of the first things you you talked about the, the fit yeah and it shows you that's all that's an appearance you know how do you come out you know the quality material which is the music you know the the performance how do you perform it how do you showcase it and your personality as a person like how do you move mm. and i feel like those are very important things because brands want to associate with people that look like they align with the qualities of their brand. Like a, a brand like, um, let's say, uh, like, let's say, Club, or like maybe Coca-Cola, may work with a particular artist and may not work with a particular artist based off how the artist moves. Yeah. Because that person may make that brand look bad or look good. Mm. So how do you make these other brands look good? You have to look the part. So yeah. for me, I feel like how you present yourself, 
and all that, it really, really matters a lot because that's how people pick you. Because people judge a book by its cover. People that are watching That is true, you. especially like when you're in the limelight. So for me, my biggest issue ha uh, with Ugandan artists has been stage presence and performance, right? Yeah. Because I'm like, I want to pay for a show and see a show, right? Like mm. I want you to do go all out. I remember back in the day when Uganda still used to bring international artists. Guys, what happened? <laughs> There's no budget. <laughs> anyway, so back in the day when Uganda used to bring international artists, they brought Neo. Mm -hmm. That was one of the only international artists. Because to be honest, concerts are not mm -hmm. my thing. But yeah. I went for that concert and I was like, wow. And it was just like little things. He didn't do anything spectacular. Mm -hmm. He had like his dancers. He had a live band playing. The mm -hmm. way the music sounded, the way mm -hmm. he sounded, and the, the way the dancers interacted with him. Yeah. I was like, now that's a show. So yeah. I think it's like the little things that yeah. people overlook. And yeah. And it could go a long way. Yeah. How do you stay motivated? Um living just being alive like whenever i wake up i'm like yo this is motivation enough for me to kick on because i have an opportunity to keep going forward yeah you know to keep pushing on the things that i say i care about like if i say i care about music i'm then thinking how do i get the next equipment that i need for the studio how do i improve the sound what kind of topics am i now going to talk about in the next album or the next project I'm working on. Mm. So for me, leaving is like my biggest motivation because when I'm dead, I think that's when like I won't be motivated. But as long as I'm leaving <laughs> and, and I wake up in the morning, <laughs> I am motivated. No, you're real for that. You're so mm. real for that. But you know what my motivation is? No. Money. I want money, man. That's crazy. Do you know, know my second motivation? What? Death. Oh my goodness. That's dark. It's dark, but it's the truth. Like, okay, so death how? Death because when I, when I think about life, just like I told you, like waking up, uh -huh. me not waking up is means it's what? motivation. Me not waking up means what? That you've not, that I'm you've gone. died? Yeah. Exactly. So for me, I feel like once you know that life is too short, first of all, and you know that you could die any minute, you better leave. Like actually leave, like a word. leave, like yeah. enjoy life, like do things you like. If you mm. want to travel, if you want to eat food, if you want to go to gym, if you do not want to link with certain people, don't do it. Like do the things that really sit in your heart and you're happy with them. So for me, I feel like, yeah, that should be the thing, you know? I'm clapping for you. We'll give thanks. Yeah. <laughs> a word, a word from APAS. And on that note, huh? if today, and I'm sorry to get dark, hmm. but if today was your last day, hmm. how would you spend it? I would spend it with family. Okay. Yeah, the people I love. That would be my mom, my dad, hmm. my sisters, my brothers, my friends, my girlfriend, my baby girl. Ooh. Yeah. You have out, a baby out. girl? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I would, I, would, I would rather that, like, because these are the people that really, really care about me and my fans, like my genuine fans, like I would be happy, like to spend time with people like that. And even just meeting the people who care about my shit, because man, I do it for them. Like, I do it for them. For me, I'm stuck on baby girl. Let's talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! First of all, do you consider yourself a love, like a lover, like you're you're so loving? Yeah, I think yeah. you are. You know why? Why? Because um, I've known about your relationships. Like mm. every time you've been in a relationship, yeah. I feel like I've known. <laughs> yes. And for me, I don't think you could say the same. Would you say the same? Like, have you ever no. known that? No. no so, no, 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 um, no. yeah, you you're in a relationship. Yeah. How long has it been? Um, like a year. Like a year. Yeah. And do you feel like this is the one that you're going to settle down with? Yeah, because I, I believe that I'm not, not in something just to be there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in it to win it. Like, mm. I'm there because I want to be there. Yeah. There's so many people out there, but then you pick someone, like, you, you find someone or they find you and the energy is good, the conversations are good, and uh, you both like each other, you're both aligned in certain things that you both believe in, mm. and... Uh, you try, you try living, doing life together, you know, and, and try to see how that works. Yeah. Some things work, some things don't work, but we have to always be positive. Yeah. You know what? I like that because at this big age, we can't still be out here in the streets, you know? And sadly, there's so many 
edgemates of ours mm. who are still out here in the streets. Yeah. And for me, I'm just like mind blown because I'm mm. like, how old do you think you are, sir? <laughs> <laughs> People are growing old. You're old. <laughs> I'm also like on the lady's side because yeah. I'm speaking with a friend of mine, she's called Fatuma. Mm-hmm. She had come to like uh, to deliver my outfits that I'd bought for my girlfriend. Like I bought her like two outfits. Aww. And uh, so she had come to deliver them from Kenya. Mm. So when she came, she's a fan of mine. So it was really interesting, like even just talking about music, the songs she likes and all that and what she doesn't understand because she doesn't know Luganda, but she's trying to get to know stuff. But having a conversation and, and she's like, we are growing old. By the time you clock 30, <laughs> you start looking at your life a little different. Yeah. And there's pressure even from family, like yeah. even like speaking to some lady friends of mine like uh, people want them to get married or like whatever like there's so much pressure because people want to see something yeah they've but seen you and they're like okay we want to see something the and truth just is too much. the truth is if you do live up until you're about 80 or 90 mm. it being in your 30s you're still very young compared yeah. to you know what yeah. you're going to grow yeah. up to yeah however you should know better yeah. You shouldn't, in my opinion, like you, you can't be doing the same things that we're doing in our 20s. Yeah. Be refined, you know, yeah. be, be, be haven't, demure. Haven't you <laughs> exactly. Like for you, for you, you're growing in reverse. Like no, what they're is not. This? Like I feel like some people are age, but they don't grow. A word. You get me? Like yeah, you could easily age. Yeah. But you may fail to grow as a person. Agreed. <clears throat> is she younger than you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it wouldn't matter too much if she was like even close. Yeah, I just like her mind. As long as it's not like DiCaprio. (laughs) DiCaprio is the next level. I feel like it's next level. But um, personally, like, I feel like as long as you can connect, and I'll be honest with you, there are so many people that should be the one, but sometimes we look at age, we look at all these things. They're important, but. Edge, edge, is, it's relative. Yeah. Like, I feel like it's mind over matter. If you don't mind, it doesn't it matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, I was going to sing a song, but then I realized the person who sang it and the context it was just not just not appropriate. So you had to leave that. I have just like, let, let's, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> so, first big paycheck as an artist, right? What did you do with that money? First big paycheck, not the biggest. Okay. The biggest the okay, first I can say biggest. First big and then the biggest. Okay. Oh, first wait. So the first big is not the biggest? Uh uh-uh. uh. Oh, okay. It was big because it was like, wow. Compared so, to where you were at the time. Yeah, I think it was ambition mission. Ah, uh, I, so I remember that. Ambition mission around yeah, that time. So yeah. that was 2014. Mm. And I get this thing like it was to just encourage the youths not to like uh, smoking, Smoke. yeah, and, I remember you know, that. drinking and substance stuff. Substance abuse. And, yeah, substance abuse. And I'm not really big on the drinking thing and the smoking thing. Totally not. So it made sense for me to be on the campaign and they put me on. And I looked at that money. The first big thing I bought was studio speakers. Studio speakers. I remember that vividly. And I also bought a phone that I said I would never buy. Because in that time, you know, like when smartphones had just come through, (laughs) like very well, like where people like are very engaged. Yes. The nicer ones, like touch screen and all that, that had just come in like 2012, 2013. Like people were now having nice phones. I remember the HTC uh, 8, something like HS8 or something. That was like one of my first phones. Smart, smart phone, like mm. really like touch screen fully. But I was telling one of my friends, me, I, I can, can never, never, I can <laughs> never have such a phone. It will fall down and it breaks. Now you're scared and you wasted your money. Screen or whatever. And people here may not even have the screen and stuff like that. The truth is that I was broke. I was speaking because <laughs> I was broke. It had nothing Sour to grapes. do with the, yeah, Exactly. <laughs> that's why nowadays, like, I'm never bothered when I see people say, mm, that's not even my stuff. It's just because you can't afford it. Just accept. Yeah. But sometimes people can't accept that. So that was my first paycheck. I, I did that. My second one, I think it was Queen of Katwe. That was huge. That's the one I had in mind when I asked. Yeah, that yeah, was Yeah, that's the one I had in mind. Huge. Mm-hmm. Like, it was really huge. They paid you like an international artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How did it, first of all, how did it feel? Hundreds. Like, first of all, you know when you get like hundreds of millions, it's different because, like, it's like you've never gotten money 
that big at once. Like you get like 10 million or like get like a 20 or, but now this is big. This is bigger than that. And let me tell you, I changed the money from one account to another account thinking the money, the account that it had come to, they would want to steal it off that one. I need to transfer it to the next one. <laughs> like that's how scared I was. Yeah. Like I was scared. When I got that money, I was so scared. But anyway, I bought my first car cash. Like just paid for it. What was your first car? GDI. What? Pajero. What? Pajero. Yeah, Pajero GDI. That was my first car. And I paid for it immediately. Imagine your first car being a Pajero. Oh my God. How does it feel to be God's favorite? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't but, know. But, yeah, but I, I'm thankful. I'm yeah. thankful. But what I would say, like, I actually didn't want to buy that. I was buying a range. Because remember, I had a lot of money to even buy like a Range Rover. So the thing is that. I'm not, glad you didn't though. I didn't because my dad told me, nah, you don't have to buy. It's like you'll have so many problems. If that's your first car yeah. and you're spending all that money on your first car, it's like buy something that you can manage. Right now, like I have like a C220, a Benz, but you see now that is like, now I'm at the level where I can easily like deal with a Benz. Yeah. You know, like I can manage its issues and I feel like I'm there. Mm. But in the beginning, I was just overreaching. <laughs> My dad was like, cool down your yeah. temperature. So yeah. he's like, man, relax. Mm. And, and I got that. But it was interesting. The first real big things I bought was the studio because it was more expensive than the car actually. Yeah. So I just got majority of the equipment I needed. I spent like, um, I spent like 20,000 US like on just getting like studio equipment. So, cause, cause that's like my bread and butter. Like mm. that's everything that even got me to that level. Yeah. So I first invested in the thing that made sure that I have that, that I've just gotten. So I feel like it's important to invest in that thing that actually brings you that money so and to this day it's still bringing you money exactly though yeah. i'm re re reshaping it i'm yeah. just getting new equipment uh, i sold almost everything i had yeah i just bought like a, a mic my favorite mic of all time i bought it three thousand and eight hundred us dollars i just bought it two weeks ago mm. and it's interesting that i i now have a mic of my dreams like Okay, like, let's unpack that a little bit. Mm. What, what, like, what's so special about this mic? Because the rest of us, as we're here, yes. say, we're like 3,800 on a, on a mic. Like, what's wrong with these other mics that you've been using that you have given us bangers and bangers exactly. and bangers with? Yes. So what's the difference? The level of quality. You see now you're using this rod. Mm -hmm. If you're using, like, just like a Mia rappel, the sound quality is a little different yeah. compared to this. Mm. So I feel like... That's very, very prudent. Like if you're trying to get something, get something that is of quality. One thing I told you when I got here was the quality of your podcast. I wouldn't say that if you're using just a smartphone and, and maybe most of the stuff was just untidy, like in a sense. But because it's like tight, everything is organized with the sound and everything. It just brings out things better. So I feel like sometimes you need to upgrade if you're at the level to upgrade. Because yeah. at one stage, the first mic I bought was 1.5. Mm. I'm talking like 14 million for a mic. Yeah, like, like someone's car. You know, basically. that's someone's car. But, but <laughs> Wait, I, I mean, think someone, I think my car. <laughs> you know, like, like I mean, like, I mean, like, I don't even mean to even say that, but it's because of the quality that you get from that mic. And I can feel it. Yeah. I tried out songs that I'd done before. Yeah. And tried to sing in this mic the same song. And uh, there is day and light difference. Mm. It just shows you. And I feel like, okay, the equipment doesn't make you. It's you who makes the music. But you need quality stuff to actually bring out quality work. That's why I told you about the qualities of, of an artist. Okay. So you know yeah. what? The next song you release... I better feel it in my chest. <laughs> I need to feel the vibrations. Do you know the first? In my heart. Th yes. Do you know the, the first song I did with that mic? Uh huh. The one with with uh, Liko Bang. No, no, no. Mm. I've just recorded it actually oh. like a week ago. Yeah. The last song I did um, was with with that particular one. Mm. Is um it's called Kabaka. Okay. Yeah. So when you listen to Kabaka, maybe you'll feel we it. We shall. Difference. Okay. We shall. We will be. Wait, when is it coming out? December. 
Okay. We shall on the dancehall album. <laughs> All right. Yeah. We'll be waiting. So that's two albums this year. Yeah. I just wanted to show people working. that it's, yeah, yeah, it's possible. Mm. Yeah, we're not out here playing. Yeah. You've been, you've been, obviously, in the industry for a while. You've performed on stage. You've been out there. What's your most cringe-worthy stage moment of your career? Okay, let me tell you something. When you <laughs> said cringe, eh? I read when you had sent me some of the highlights of what we we'll talk about. I went into Google. I said, what does cringe mean? <laughs> You know what? You're not the first person to say this. Yeah. I'm not to say this as well. But okay, guys. Like, do, are you not? But I got to. I got to. I got to. I got to understand it. Yeah. And funny enough, embarrassing. Like I, yes. But there are so many words in English that I know that so many people don't know. Facts. Because I read a lot, and there's just a lot that I research. Like, if I see a word I don't understand, I get my dictionary and then check it out and. F- find out and I'm like okay now I know this but that's something I didn't know but then I got to know it I was like ah nah I get it that's even easy so anyway my most cringe moment I think I was paid 2000 US dollars to go for a wedding that was my first wedding to perform at and yeah I was paid in dollars I wasn't paid in UGX I was really paid in because that's what I asked for yeah so they give me this money the wedding was at um the wedding was at uh, Speak, Munyonyo, and the sound was horrible for an artist. They put up speakers for public address, not for performance. So basically, whatever I would sing would come back as an echo as, an echo. as I'm singing the next word. Oh, Jesus Christ. That was the most hardest money to eat because I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> I was so unhappy because for me, I, I believe like you have to do your job yeah, well. Yeah. And I was not allowed to do my job well because mm. of the setup. I thought they were like sound tests. Do, do they not do sound check with for weddings? I stuff? think they do, but then they because it's a wedding, they, they set up more for for the speaking, speaking the MC, yes, not for the person performing. Yes, yeah, so whenever what comes, it kind of comes back and all that stuff. It or just did they want you to good. mime? They were like, ah, well, don't worry. Let me shall, tell you, shall, even shall when mime. you mime, the words will come back. <laughs> so the problem is that if the mic is on, yeah. and if you put the mic off, then what are you doing? Did yeah. you come here to mime? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. They Maybe would have they brought Jerry to mime <laughs> your songs. Maybe they wanted two thousand dollars. They gave you two thousand days to just show up and be their face. And anyway, yeah, but anyway, the other songs worked because the band had. Had a setup, so yeah. I also had like a few songs to do with the band. There were like three yeah. or two, and since the band was there for those last two songs, it was okay because when I jumped with them, they had stage monitors, so it wasn't even a problem. Mm. Yeah, but with with the first part of it, it was hectic. It was hectic. That's like one of those tough moments. But I've I've had moments where people boo me off stage when I was starting to to do music. They're like, "Vayo, vayo." But anyway, for me, like, it wasn't even stressful. You tell me why I put the mic down, I say, thank you, I put it down, I go. Yeah. I don't have to stress myself. Yeah. I'm not here to sing for the people who don't want to be sung to. Yeah, it's never like, that serious. It's not, it's not that serious. And since you do not want me here, then I, Let me I go. also don't want myself here. <laughs> I mean, I'm more useful in places where i'm needed and wanted yeah yeah I, yeah i think i think we all are so you know what i just thought about you have a video that just came out with liko bangi yeah. and you guys were like love interest in that video yeah like all up on each other yeah yeah how does your how does your girlfriends feel about that like how do you maneuver being in a relationship and having to shoot like those love scenes in songs um in music videos because this is my job, first of all. This is what I do. Yeah. And my girlfriend, I think she's been a fan before she's been my girlfriend. She's seen what I do. Mm. And if you look at my album now, my album is very sensual, very sexual, very demure, very <laughs> spiritual. <laughs> so you expect such kind of vibes because... I have to get closer to people like yeah. in such videos. Like you have to show the love within the video. You have to show that kind of uh, emotion when you're like um, when you're like performing like a particular song for a video shoot, and it's a video shoot. You know, this is not this is not a blue movie. 
you know, it's a video shoot. We're actually just shooting a video. And they say, cut. And they say, okay, yeah, that looks good. That, that doesn't look good. Could, you, could we do that again? And for me, I feel like it's an act. You know, and honestly, she's, she's a fan of the music. She's one of the first people to watch the behind the scenes, which I would call in front of the scenes because she was in front of the scenes mm. watching that. So yeah. for me, I feel like it's not a problem because it's a song. I don't know exactly how she feels entirely, Inside, yeah. entirely, because maybe she may not tell me everything, but best of what I know, she loves the video. Um, you know, I'm a fan, so even just performing the song with her it's like really nice it's mm. really nice and she's sexy like i would like to like perform with people like that okay I look nice yeah <laughs> so i had a story about uh john legend he's, he's married to chrissy Teigen. Yeah. their first when they just started dating he was shooting um the, vid the video for green light yeah. and she was there and there were so many model girls da -da 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 -da, and she got jealous threw a tantrum, abused chicks, abused people, <laughs> and left, right? So I thought about it, and I was like, <laughs> being a girlfriend to an artist is actually not for the faint-hearted. Yeah. You have to be very secure in yourself. Yeah. Basically, let me, let me list for you. Artists, DJs. Now, as for DJs, <laughs> just don't bother. <laughs> media people. I don't, I like, I'm a media person myself. Yeah. So I say this from a place of knowledge. <laughs> I know. Anyway, I was snitching on you. I'm people. snitching, and I have to tell you, like, okay, but the truth like, is. Why do you think that? Uh, okay, those that, those are kind of dangerous. Like, okay, because one, you're out there, you get a lot of validation from your audience. Like, yeah. there's a lot of girls out there who see a DJ. Oh my God! They mm. see an artist, Apus. Oh my, like Apus. We used to go to the same gym, mm. and people would be finding out over you, yeah. whether you're there, whether you're not yeah. there. So I'm just like, you get so much attention mm. that if you're not um, smart, like if you're not somebody with a lot of self-control mm. and self-awareness, mm. you can let it get to your head, yeah. and then you can you end up mistreating or just yeah. not being nice to your partner. So yeah. for me, those professions, nah, like... I'm good. You just run away. Ah, I'm good. <laughs> and also because I work in the industry, yeah. I know. But I get it. Like, I, I feel like it's fair enough for you to say that, being a person that is in the industry. For me, what I've seen is that sometimes people punish people for other people liking them the way they like them. And for me, I feel like it doesn't, it, 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 I can get it, but it's, it's, it's not worth it. Would you date someone in the industry? Like someone yeah, in the industry? Yeah, if I like them, why not? Okay. I, I like would that. because because I would understand like I know what you do. Okay. I know what you do. I know you, people are going to meet you people love you. Just like how I love you, there are people out there who love you and I should understand that. And that's the funny thing is that people think there's exclusivity with the love that they have for the person. No. We have exclusivity in our relationship because we care about one another and we've chosen to be together. Yeah. But that does not stop other people from loving me as well. They do. Mm. I meet fans and they tell me they love me, even guys, though I'm not into the LGBT thing, you know, I respect that they live their life, but you know, like I'm not into that, I'm into women, but if you think about it, people will show you love, men, women, kids, grandparents, um, grandmothers, grandfathers, whoever, they will show you love because they like what you do for them. Yeah. Maybe you're a TV presenter and they like how you speak. Maybe you're an artist, they like how you sing or whatever, and they like you. You know, they genuinely like what you bring to the table because that makes them feel happy. It fills their soul, and they love you. But then you have a partner, and you chose them. Mm. And sometimes when you're with someone and you punish them because other people show them love or affection, like I feel like it's really not a good thing because yeah. you also at one stage liked them like that, but now you have an exclusive thing. Appreciate what you have and also appreciate that other people see that what you have is good. <laughs> and they can also see the good that you saw. Okay. Yeah. On that note... <laughs> On that note, it's time for us to play a game. It's time for us to play a game. So, the game is called She's a 10 But, right? And I'm going to give you these scenarios and you're going to tell me whether this person remains at 10 mm -hmm. or if their marks go down. Okay. So, she's a 10 But, she's always late. 
I put this one in strategically because of the conversation we had off air. <laughs> what is she now? What number? 0 0.1. Why? <laughs> because because I, I really don't uh, associate myself with people who come late. I have friends who come late. I'm used to them. Now those ones I'm used. But if I am dealing with like a lady, at least communicate if you're going to be late. But if it's your thing that always you do that, then I don't want that because it, it just doesn't show that you're serious with certain things if you're always on that kind of vibe. If yeah. it's a once in a while thing, I can understand. Yeah. But if it's like a routine, like I'm not with Okay, it. okay, define late. Gosh, I feel like I'm being attacked right now. Like, define late. Like, okay. Like 10 minutes, 20 minutes? Ah, 20 minutes. 30 okay. minutes? 15 minutes is okay. 20 mm. minutes is okay. What's late? Like, like an, an hour? hour. Uh, no, an hour is, is irresponsible. Yeah, because yeah, that's now, indiscipline. now that's crazy. Yeah, because <laughs> I can understand someone can go into jam. Like, I'll give you an example. Yeah. We all can get mad for certain reasons. So I'll give you a scenario. If you're driving and there's just so much jam and you're pissed that there's so much jam, hmm? and then you get to the point where the jam was and you find out that they've knocked a kid and that's the reason for the that's jam. That's dark. Eh. Now, it is dark Yeah. because I'm trying to paint a scenario for you. Uh -huh. You can no longer be mad. <laughs> yeah. Why? Because now you see what really happened is something something really bad. Mm. You know, and yeah. it really warrants the jam to be there. Mm. So sometimes it's because we rush into feeling like, oh, I'm hard done by someone or someone has done something, but you don't know why yeah. this has actually happened. So you're judging best of that. But what if you really understood what the issue was? If someone is late because maybe their mom had a problem and they had to rush to the hospital and then come and link with you still. It's a different feel when you get to agreed, understand agreed, that. You agreed. Know? So, I, I, that's why I'm like, okay, so she's not 0 0.1 anymore. She's like, she's like six-ish. She would be six if there was an issue. <laughs> and she communicated and said, oh, you know okay. what, this happened. Yeah, okay. I'll be fine with it. Okay, fine. Yeah. She's a 10, but she, she doesn't post you on social media. It's fine. Yeah. I'm not bothered by someone posting me or not posting me. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't matter. She's a 10, but she still follows all her exes on Instagram. The exes thing, I wouldn't really get into it. First of all, if I would say before I give my rating, I don't want to be the person who tells you you shouldn't follow your ex. I'm watching. I don't want to be the person to tell you that you shouldn't do a. You should know. But if you don't know, then time Red will flag. tell. Okay, so what, 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 on, on, on the scale, what is she? On the scale? Mm. One she's, to ten. She's like a two. Ah, <laughs> my goodness. Okay, so l let me just say this. When you wake up with someone, do you go on Instagram and delete them intentionally? Like you as, as APAS, hmm. do you go on Instagram and delete your exes? I've, I've deleted majority of, I don't have any of my exes on my on my in your pages. social media. Yeah, because I have an artist page. And even if I posted my girlfriend, it would be fine because I would want to in the moment. And uh, when I posted my girlfriend, I think it was on Snap on her birthday. She said that's like a soft launch. Like, what is this? I'm like, what is a soft launch? I don't know launch? what a soft launch is. <laughs> <laughs> now you I know. I love, now I know. Yeah. But I get it. Like, I feel like, I feel like it's okay to share a moment. Like, if let's say you're with someone and genuinely you're together, you took a nice picture and you wanted to share it and you both want to share it, I think it's okay. I wouldn't find it as a problem. But even if it wasn't shared, I feel like sometimes we do the most like over posting the person like what are you proving like no. there's nothing to prove so for me i feel like whatever someone wants to do for me i don't think it should be a thing i do all the time for some people they may want to do it all the time which is also fine mm. but for me personally i would say now nah, what for what no, i was asking about exes though so you, if it you, comes do you to unfollow your exes because for me i feel like it's petty and childish me i don't like okay i, I leave you there I would say it depends on how the breakup was. That's true. That is one thing. With all my exes, I think we left mutually. 
I've never had an issue with them like 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 I've abused anyone or like um it's because I I did some crazy crazy the craziest thing ever to be done and now the person left because they are mad at me for that we've left on good terms mm. so I have no problem with them but right now someone else is in charge so I'm not really bothered too much about what is going on if 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 something is bad, you can let me know if there is a problem. We can definitely talk. But I'm I'm now somewhere else, and I want to focus on that. I don't want to focus on 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 the past, and I'm not really into that. We had our moment. I still like hey, you as a human being. Do you follow them or not? <laughs> <laughs> Let's move no, wait, on. <laughs> no, wait, listen. So the way you said it, but I was giving you feedback. Yes. So I would say, my first ex. Yeah. I definitely have them on uh, on on uh, IG. On IG, mm -hmm. my first ex, my second ex, I have them on IG, and uh, my my last ex, I also have them on IG. Mm. Yes, I have them on IG. I'm so not, you see, it's not even, yes. it's not really. A I don't problem. think it's a big deal because yeah. first of all, like even when you look at the people we follow, we don't see everything that those people do. Let's yeah. be honest. Like yeah. you're following more than one thousand, one thousand people. Do you sit no. down and look at one thousand people's stuff? Like no, not really. you don't. But no. I don't keep up with their lives mm. like that. Like okay. it's not something I try to do. Okay, mm. she's a ten, but she never tells you anything personal about her life. So you're dating, but you don't really know anything about her personal life. Mm. What is I she don't now? Know anything about her personal life? You know, yeah, a few things here and there, but yeah, there are people who are like that. They're secretive. I think that is a debating. It's not dating. <laughs> 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 That's not a relationship. That's a relationship. Yeah. And uh, this person gives a few points and that person gives more points. I, I feel like there's need for reciprocal energy in a certain way for you guys to actually like work together. Mm. The energy has to be felt on both ends. Yeah. And... Um, that would be weird. That is weird. That would be weird. Uh, give it a zero. Yeah. <laughs> a zero. But like... you know what's crazy? You'd be amazed how many girls are out there. And you know, I, f I, I feel like men are more firm about certain things. But there are girls out there who are dating men and they don't really know anything about that man. Okay. Like they ask you like, where does he live? Mm, he stays like in Chanja. Like where in Chanja? You've never been to the house. You know, like stuff like that. And I'm like, that's definitely a red flag. You've never met any of her friends. You've mm. never met any of, like nobody in her family. Mm. If there's a crisis on her end, there's no one who knows about you. But I feel you know like, I, I, feel, I get your point, but I feel like even that person that is dating is a red flag. The person because, in that relationship? Yeah, because you're not serious. Like, how, how, how would you not know where your guy lives? Like, like all that stuff. No, because stuff. some people are just sketchy, man. No, if the person is sketchy, then, then you, you... Respect yourself. You the person? Like, exactly. if the person is sketchy, you need to understand that. I agree. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. you need to ask you a red flag as well, because why? You know what, Apas? Mm -hmm. This has been a fantastic <laughs> conversation. <laughs> I feel like crazy. me and you could go on and on all day. Yeah. But this has been such a fantastic conversation. Thank right. you so much for finally mm -hmm. honoring my invitation. It's a blessing, always. And coming through. Thank you. Yeah, and you said your album is dropping in December. Mm, yeah. What, do you want to talk about that a little bit? What should we look forward to? Look forward for dancehall vibes. Dancehall vibes. And in December, I'll be coming too. You'll be coming too? Yeah. To where? You will not understand. <laughs> what did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> That's just left for me. You'll be, you'll be coming too? Hmm? The sentence has ended. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> you know what? I'm not going to try to understand this, but if you did understand it, please let me know in the comments. You've been watching. It's never that serious. We are at the Patio Bella. As always, they are gracious hosts. And if you want to have a good time, just like a nice, chill, fun day vibe or evening vibe, make sure that you come through and have yourself a fantastic time. Also, I am dressed by STW. You need to go check out their Instagram page. They have a new collection that just dropped. And they have cute little dresses like this don't forget to like subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you're notified every time i upload a video welcome back to season three bye <laughs>